All right, I'm joined now by Bellator star middleweight Dalton Rasta, who will fight on Bellator 256 April the 9th when he meets Tony Johnson. Dalton, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. Uh, pleasure to talk to you. It's been way too long since you've been inside the cage. Six months it's been now. Yep. I'm sure you've been itching to get back in there. Has that been frustrating to you? Yeah, because uh, there was rumors that Bellator was going to be back in February, you know, and they asked my manager if I'd be good for the end of February, and I was actually in Abu Dhabi at the time helping out a opponent, so I said early March, push it back a week or two, and I'm good to go, you know, just for the, uh, you know, time change and everything, and uh, the next thing you know, everything got pushed back, and I think it was because of the Showtime deal, I think that's what they were working on, so it's been a while, you know, I, I'm ready to get back in there, man. And what do you think of that Showtime deal, man? Because I think that really is huge for Bellator. I really feel like it'll take the promotion really to that next level. Uh, I think it's a good thing. You know, there's uh, it's big in the boxing world, you know, so hopefully it gets a lot of boxing fans in the MMA more, a little bit in a, more in the Bellator. Uh, exposes it to a larger larger audience, uh, act, uh, or as you said. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great for the Bellator brand. And, uh even better for the fighters. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, tell me about Abu Dhabi and what that was like. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I thought I saw a picture with you and some guy named Habib. Is that right? Nah, it was Conor McGregor. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. It was Conor McGregor. I don't know. Yeah, how it I was <laughs> Yeah, man, what was that like? I'm a huge Conor fan, man. So, yeah, tell me what yeah. that was like. Yeah, me too. Uh, so, I was over there for, I don't know, 10 days. We flew out to Vegas first. We were there for a couple of days and flew out to Abu Dhabi. And it was like nine-hour time difference, you know. So I was only talking to, like, people during, like, midday for a couple hours over here. And uh, besides that, I mean, we had a hotel room to train in other than our normal hotel room where they put mats in and stuff. It, was, uh, it wasn't ideal, you know, but it uh, wasn't bad. And then uh, we weren't really allowed to leave the hotel. We were allowed to go for a run around the hotel, and we were allowed to go up to the pool up top. There was restaurants and stuff in there. It was nice, very nice hotel, you know. Uh, they had nice accommodations and everything there. Very expensive, though, very expensive. And um, then, as you said, I met Connor. So one of the managers from Paradigm, who I'm signed by, Tim Simpson, was there, and uh, he told me Connor was going to be coming in. He told me he's going to be arriving in fashion, you know, told me like everything he could without giving everything away. And uh, then he was like, yeah, we'll have to uh, like link you guys up. You guys will have to meet. So he texted me out of nowhere. I don't remember which day it was, but it was like, come down in the media room right now by yourself. And so right away I knew what it was. So I, I went down. Sure enough, Connor was there. Him and his son were signing posters and stuff. We got to watch that. It was pretty funny. Uh, we got to talk a little bit. You know, he asked me what my name was. It's normal stuff, you know, what weight class I fight. He was like, so you fight for Bellator, how you like it, blah, blah, blah. Just, you know, st stuff like that. And uh, it was it was really cool, man. You know, he's a cool dude. Uh, you know, you get that, uh, like, aura about him in person, too. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, it was cool. I mean, he was fighting one of my teammates, D Dustin, but, and like, I'm really cool with Dustin, but at the same time, Conor McGregor was like one of my idols growing up, you know? So, um, I was hoping there was like no, you know, whenever I posted the picture, no like bad blood or anything or, uh, like anybody taking it the wrong way, you know? So yeah. it wasn't that I was like ruined against Dustin, you know, I was just taking a picture of one of my idols, you know, growing up and huge fan of him, you know? And like I said, Dustin was one of my, one of is is one of my teammates, and he got he got the victory. But, um, and like happy for him, you know, it right. was super great, you know. And I just was hoping nobody took the wrong way, and gratefully, no one did. So. Yeah, that's that's very cool. And just to clarify for anyone out there that may be watching, that was my attempt at humor. Of course, I know who Conor McGregor is. Uh, and very cool. I was super jealous that you got to meet him, man, because I'm, I'm a huge fan. He seems like one of those guys that obviously, you know, pre this this nice guy phase that we're seeing in, in the octagon, he was a lot of trash talk. And I don't feel like that's really who he is in, in person. Was he pretty accommodating, nice, and just a down-to-earth guy when you were around him? Yeah, he was super nice you know and uh didn't seem like super cocky or anything but honestly i mean this is fighting's entertainment business at the end of the day i 
one of the reasons I liked him, you know, is because of all the shit talk, and then he backed it up, you know. But the shit talk was definitely entertaining. I look forward to, like, Conor McGregor press conferences and stuff. Now with the nice guy stuff, you know, it's uh, it's a little different, you know. But it's still, whenever he fights, you know, it's still like a holiday. But uh, I, I would like to see him go back to the trash talk. You know, that's who he, I, I feel like that's who he really is as a person. You know, I don't feel, I don't feel like that's fake. Yeah. Yeah, well, either way, he's box office. He's someone that, I mean, if you're a combat sports fan, you just gravitate towards a Conor McGregor event because that's what it is. Can you give me any, I guess, inside info as to, like, Poirier's mindset heading into that fight? Because, man, that was so impressive. What he did, kicking those legs and, and just immobilizing McGregor was huge. And I cannot wait for this trilogy whenever it happens. Listen, man, I, I mean, I don't know exactly everything that goes inside. He does a lot of privates with Mike Brown and stuff and trains, you know, separately from everybody. But whenever he's in the, uh, like team class and everything, he's there, he's working hard, just like he's like an upper comer, you know, not like he's on the top already. And, uh, I mean, just has like super good attitude every, about everything. He's super cool, you know, uh, just acts like a normal guy, uh, goes in there, trains hard every day. And, uh, I mean, as for the game plan, I mean, I'm sure to, with the trilogy fight, they're changing it because Connor's going to be expecting this, those leg kicks and stuff now. So, but, um, I mean, for the whole camp leading up to that fight, I had no idea what, what they were working on, you know, and, uh, I don't, I don't know this time either, but, uh, I'm sure whatever he is, whatever he is working on, uh, Mike Brown's coming up with a game plan that that'll work. Yeah, no doubt about it. Mike is, is one of the main boys, so uh, he clearly knows what he's uh, what he's doing, one of the best coaches in the game. Let's talk about that big win, man. Last time you were out there in Bellator, six months ago, UD went over Ty Gwerder. Uh, very impressive victory. You clearly won the fight. Um, it was it was a dogfight, though. I mean, he came to fight, and he made it relatively difficult, I, I would say. Was that one of the harder fights that you had at, at this point in your career? You know... Uh, when I think back about probably the toughest fights I've had, I would say probably Cody Brundage, my last amateur fight. I ended up finishing him in the third round, but up until that point, uh, he made it pretty tough. It was a really close fight. Um, for Ty Gorder, it was more of me just being on the like cautious, safe side about things, trying not to take too many risks and get caught with something, you know, because he does all that flashy, dangerous stuff, the flying knees, the head kicks. You know, he had explosive one-two. You know, he had some power. Um, and also I think whenever I hit him with a few power shots and stuff that made him a little bit more hesitant as well. So it slowed down the pace of the fight to where I can control the pace and I was walking him down and everything. So, um, it was, like I said, it was more about me being safe than anything. I probably could have turned it up, you know, and made it a lot more one-sided than it was. But, uh, you know, like I said, I was being on more on the safe than sorry side and uh that's not me you know you're not going to see that going forward i when i look back at that i wish i would have uh taken more risks like i usually do and uh i I think that's what you'll see going forward okay what was your was your team your coaches were they pleased with the outcome of that fight i mean obviously win is, is what's most important you clearly got that but what was their feedback from you uh from your performance that night i mean honestly from what i remember it was all positive uh yeah i don't i don't remember anything uh any negative feedback or any criticism or anything of the way i approached the fight i think that's the way we like we game planned it you know we were hoping for the finish uh if, i feel like if i would have taken more risks i would have got the finish but i also obviously leave yourself open to danger yourself you know and somebody who has finishing ability like ty Gorder, two you have two guys going into a fight this happens often. You see it at the heavyweight division all the time. You see two guys that have power, two guys that have finishing ability. They go into a fight. They both are over cautious. You know, they're both safe, and then you end up with a decision. You know, and I think that's what happened with me and Ty Gorder. Yeah, well, look, I mean, Ty is no joke. He was he's a very, very skilled opponent. So and you clearly won that fight. So in my book, very impressive win. You stay perfect inside the cage, undefeated record right now. What has life been like at, at ATT, man? I mean, how are you evolving as a fighter since you've been there? Everything's great, man. Like I said, this fight camp has been awesome. And I mean, I haven't been just down here for the fight camp. It's, I went back home for like, so I, after my last fight, I came back down here. Then I was here until uh, about around Christmas time, went back for Christmas and New Year's. And as soon as I came back, I went to Abu Dhabi with one of my teammates to help him prepare. 
and stuff while we were over there. And I came back down here, was training, you know, training every day, twice a day. Uh, and then just pretty much waiting on a call, you know. And it, this fight camp outside of, like, the normal training and stuff I was doing since I've been down here has been great, man. And on top of that, all the all the stuff whenever I'm not in fight camp, learning from different coaches, uh, you know, learning new techniques, learning new ways to mix things up, uh, adding new weapons to my arsenal every every everything's been great man and i feel the best i've ever felt you know i'm peaking i have no injuries this time last fight i went into the fight with a couple injuries and didn't talk about them or anything because i don't like putting excuses out there because now you're just giving yourself an excuse if you lose you know it's like you go into the fight it's like oh i tore my lcl it's like okay i put that out there before the fight now if i go into the fight and lose it's like oh it's because of my lcl you know, so I don't like doing that. I don't like putting that stuff out there. But this fight, I feel awesome. I feel great. No no injuries, just a little bit of bumps and bruises. And uh, I'm feeling good. I'm ready to go, man. Who have been some of the, the main guys you've been getting your work in with? Uh, Sparring-wise, I've been working with Rafael Carvalho, former Bellator champ. Uh, and then Fernando Reyes, who's an up-and-coming up prospect as well. Uh, they're both taller. They both can fight orthodox. Uh, Fernando's more of my opponent's style. He throws a lot of his check hooks when he's backing up and stuff. And uh, more heavy on his front foot. Rafael is more kickboxing, you know. He's throwing a lot of kicks, a lot of, like, real jittery, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, those are my two tr main sparring partners. I sparred with a few other guys here and there. My wrestling partners... Roman Ferraldo, Austin Vanderford, Johnny Eblin, Sabah Mossy, worked with Masvidal a little bit, you know. Um, I just have a plethora of, you know, training partners, good, good high-level training partners. And, I mean, it's everywhere with jiu-jitsu. I got Carlos Antonio Jr. I got Marcus Puchecha. I got uh, Marcus Perez, I got like all these guys, and then our wrestling coach is Steve Mocker. It's like I can't be in a better place. Yeah, I mean, good God, ATT is is one of the very best gyms in the world. There's no doubting that. Um, I know you're not looking past your opponent right now, Tony Johnson, but when you look at the top middleweights on the Bellator roster, obviously you got the champ Musasi. I'm a big fan of John Salter. I, I just like the guy inside and outside of the cage. He's one of the, the top guys there. How far away do you feel you are from being in that top echelon of the middleweights for Bellator? Do you feel you're pretty close? Yeah, maybe. My plan is to finish this guy in the first round, you know. I see, I see a first-round TKO, and... I'm very confident in that. I've never been more confident in a first-round knockout or first-round TKO in my entire life. And I think after that, against an opponent of this caliber, you know, I think that throws me in there right away. And if not, one more fight. Very good. Well, let's talk about Tony Johnson. He's 9-2, as you said. I mean, the, the plan is to go in there and KO him in the first. He's on a five-fight winning streak. Um, you know, he's got a couple of wins via punches. Do you feel your best avenue to win this fight is to take him to the ground and finish him there, or do you want to stand with him and, and do what you do, which is, you know, knock people out on the feet? Listen, man, every fight starts on the feet, starts standing, and I've watched pretty much every fight that's available online from him, and he's been hurt multiple times. He got hurt by Joe Schilling. He got hurt in the uh, – he didn't get hurt in the Contender Series fight. The Alton Cunningham just had, held him up against the cage the entire time. But – uh in every other fight, like the Joe Schilling, I watched one of his fights in Strike Force like a while ago. You know, I watched uh, a couple of fights against like when, when he was pro, but they're earlier on in his career. Every single fight, it seems he gets hurt. He gets hurt with a right hand for like every single fight, you know. And a couple times they were bad, and I was like, kind of yelling at my phone, like I already know the result, and I know he wins the fight, but I'm yelling at my phone to the opponents, like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like, finish him, you know? And they're just like walking at him. It's like pull the trigger like dude's hurt his legs are wobbly he doesn't have his balance you know his equilibrium's off finish hit him one more time and he's done you know and uh yeah so i mean i've seen him hurt multiple times and by guys with a lot less power than me a lot smaller guys too and uh i see myself being able to finish him with a knockout on the feet and if the takedown's there you know if he's too worried about the the right hand and he's 
or he's coming forward too much and not respecting their, their wrestling, I'll make him respect it. You know, I'll, I'll take him down. If that's what I choose to do, I will get the takedown. If I choose to knock him out, I'll knock him out. Whatever. I, my, my thing is I'm going to impose my will this fight no matter what. Very good. Well, can't wait to see you back in the cage, man. As I said earlier, it's been far too long. April 9th, Bellator 256. Dalton will face Tony Johnson. Always a pleasure to talk to you, my man. Before I let you go, tell people where to follow you on social media. And if you have any sponsors, the floor is yours. All right. Um, Instagram, Dalton underscore Rasta. Twitter, Dalton Rasta. Uh, Facebook, Dalton Rasta MMA. And uh, shout out to my sponsors, Aries Agencies, uh, Armina Stone, Ideal Integrations, uh, uh, damn adventures and scooter king um you know they've they've all been around for the past few fights and uh i mean they're continuing to support and sponsor me and uh i'm very grateful for, the, for them as well as my coaches mike brown steve mako uh anderson de carvalho and everybody here at att that's been helping me